morning, everybody, and it's lovely to be back and to see you all again. Welcome to you all, and especially welcome to Malcolm McRae, who is with us this morning while Stuart is on holiday. Thank you for joining us, and we're looking forward to making music and worshipping with you. Let us call each other to worship using the words on the screen. May we, in God's name, make community here. Shape space for those around us. Be a home for the stranger and the unloved. And affirm here all belong. May we open ourselves to the word of God. That it would stir in us a fresh word of peace and truth. Let us worship God and sing, we cannot measure how you heal. Mm -hmm. Beside us 
as we bring our worship out into the world. Like the Canaanite woman, we also call out, sometimes in a whisper, but sometimes in a shout, have mercy on us. For we too know that we have failed to do the tasks you expect from us. We fail at times to keep your word. We forsake our neighbor or do not act lovingly as you would us have us do. We neglect to show hospitality to strangers and betray your creation. Lord, forgive us. Have mercy on us and set our feet again on paths of peace. With grateful hearts, we give thanks for your mercy and love for each one of us, which is beyond measure. We give thanks for your abundant love and your patience as we seek to learn from you. All this we ask in the name of Jesus our Lord, your Son. Amen. Right. Now we have Ola and we have Rory and we have Rosie here today. And I was going to tell you something about the man who's on the pictures there. Papa. Do you know who it is? Papa. It's Papa. Do you know who it is, Rosie? Papa. It's Papa. Do you know which Papa it is? It's not your Papa, is it? Do you know that man? Can you, do you recognize him? Look behind you. <laughs> That's him. You know him fine. Well done, Rosie. That's exactly who it is. It's Neil. Can you see where he is? He's at the doctor. Yeah, he's in the hospital actually because he has had an operation and after the operation on his foot, they put his foot into, a, into this. Ooh. Don't smell it. <laughs> it's a bit smelly there, especially at the bottom. Can you see how dirty it is? That's what he, they put his foot into, but now his foot looks quite normal again, doesn't it? It's great. When something happens to us, like in, Neil had a, an accident many, many years ago, and that's why he needed the operation. And it's great that we can go into hospital, isn't it? And visit a doctor, isn't it? Now, there's something else here in my bag. It's a bag, and what's, what's this? What is it? It's a heart. And what's happened to that poor heart? Well, it's, it's got a bandage around it. Why do you think the heart has a bandage around it? Because it's hurt. The heart was hurt. Oh, oh, poor heart. It was hurt. It's quite difficult to mend the heart, isn't it? When the heart is hurt. I suppose when, when the heart is hurt, you go to the doctor too. They do complicated things and give you pills. I'm sure some people have an experience there. But what if we are sad? really, really sad inside us, and we say, I'm so sad, and my heart hurts, and we don't really have to go to the doctor then, do we? No. What can help us, do you think, when our heart is sore, and when somebody has broken our heart? Uh, what can help you us? Can, they can make them smile. Yes, make somebody smile. How do you make somebody smile, do you think? You mean, Doing a funny face, I think that's a great idea. Tell them a joke. That would be, that would cheer up the heart, wouldn't it? Or the, the head that's on top of the heart. Or what else can we do to cheer up, to make the heart feel better when the heart is broken? Give it a hug. Look what Rosie's doing. Give the heart a hug, and I'm sure that makes him feel better. Don't you? Do you feel better when mommy gives you a hug? Yeah, definitely. What else can we do to, to cheer up the heart? to mommy. That's a good idea. Go, Ola. Mom, go to mommy or to visit a friend. That cheers us up too, doesn't it? When we're a bit sad and the heart is threatening to be breaking. Yeah, and I do the best jokes ever. You do the best jokes ever. I come to you then when my heart is sore. That's a great idea. Now, do you know why we're in church? Because 
God wants to help us to mend when our to, he wants to help people to learn to be doctors and study hard and, and help people who are sore in their bodies but he also wants us wants to help us mend our hearts when we're sad and when our heart is broken and the doctor can't really help unless it's very specific he wants to give us a hug and makes us feel happy again and that's why we're having communion today as well he gives us some bread and some wine to say don't forget, you are my family, and I love you lots. Is that a good message? I think so too. Shall we sing a song now? Yeah. And then, Rosie, can you take that bag? And in the bag are two stories today, one about healing and one about Jesus having communion, having bread and wine with his friends, okay? And there's a puzzle sheet in it and a coloring sheet as well. And then if you go, are you, are you going out today, Rosie? If you go with Rosie and Mummy, and there's toys, or you can read, listen to the story and do some drawing, okay? But let's sing a song now. Steps to healing. God wants to heal us. There, we lay our broken world in sorrow at the okay. The first reading today is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, and it's page 979 of the Pew Bible. Listen for the word of God. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, 
Some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Before the Gospel reading, we sing together twice the chant from Teze. It's in the hymn book at 801, Ubi Caritas et Amor Est. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be familiar with the phrase, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. The word family has many different meanings to many different people. For example, recruiters at many companies trying to entice people to come to work for them will often speak of being like a family at that particular company, often failing to mention how dysfunctional that family actually is. At Christmas time, which seems to start before Halloween these days, our TV adverts are awash with images of families sat around the dinner table, often with scenes of loved ones arriving at the house, having travelled many miles just to be there. You have mum, dad, the kids, the grandparents, aunties, uncles, and even the cousins, all tucking into their turkey, and the jovial time is had by all. But families are often far removed from that idealized version portrayed in Christmas adverts. The blessing and curse of being human. Perfectly imperfect as we all are. In our Gospel reading this morning we see that even Jesus is not immune from human traits either. We join him immediately after he has been teaching Pharisees, scribes and the disciples. He is making his way to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Maybe he is looking for a moment or two of downtime, a chance to recharge his batteries. No sooner does he arrive than a woman, a Canaanite woman, starts shouting after him. She cries out to Jesus that her daughter is tormented by a demon and is pleading with him for help. But Jesus chooses to ignore her. This is the first human trait on display here. Perhaps he was indeed tired. Perhaps he just wanted five minutes of peace, an exasperated plea made by many a mother to many a young child. We can probably all relate to that feeling. The disciples join the fray here, urging Jesus to send this lady away as she keeps on shouting after all of them. It looks like they want nothing to do with her, either. Perhaps they too wanted some peace and quiet. I suspect the case might be a bit simpler, a case of embarrassment at being shouted at in the street by a clearly distraught woman. Jesus' response to this is another example of a sadly very human trait. He responds by saying, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, I'm not here for them. This is in stark contrast to all other examples and quotes of Jesus' teaching of love, kindness, compassion, to all, and all being welcome in his kingdom. But in this instance, he resorts to a sadly familiar us and them mindset. Think about that for a moment. History is awash with examples of us and them all the way through to and including the present day. I'm sure without much effort, you can think of many such examples yourself. Thankfully, some can be a bit lighter hearted such as which sports team do you support? But from Israelites and Canaanites, to the clans of Scotland, to social classes, to nationalities, an ethos of us and them is an all too familiar one to find. The Canaanite lady then kneels at Jesus' feet, asking him for his help. In his answer, he effectively compares her to a dog, Again, a striking contrast from the accounts of Jesus we find elsewhere. But this lady is not easily deterred. 
heard, rebuking Jesus in her answer, noting that even dogs eat what falls from the master's table. In our final verse in the reading, Jesus responds that great is her faith and lets her request be granted to her. There are many well-used phrases that can be used here, but we'll go with Jesus was snapped out of it, reminded of who he was and of his own teachings and examples. Again, a very human trait. Although we often focus on the divine element within Jesus, it does no harm to remember that he came down to earth in human form. We have no account of what he was like as a young adult. But like all humans, this passage showed that he too could have a momentary lapse from the person he was deep down inside. We all have momentary lapses. In our opening prayers, we often ask for forgiveness for times when we do have these lapses. But we know through Jesus' love for us, we are forgiven. In the end, Jesus showed his love for the Canaanite lady, his love for all. A love he often spoke, spoke of and displayed. This teaching of love one another is echoed by Paul in his letter to the Hebrews. In the passage we read, he starts by simply stating, let mutual love continue. In another translation of the Bible, this verse speaks of loving one another like brothers and sisters, like family. The us and them ethos is challenged, encouraging us to show hospitality to strangers. Hospitality itself can have many different meanings too. For some, it means serving food and inviting people either into a home or somewhere food is served. But I would suggest that hospitality can be shown in a gesture as simple as a hello or a small act of kindness. As Paul points out, angels can be found in the most unlikely of places and where you may least expect to find them. He finishes by challenging us to remember those we can't immediately see as though we were by their side. He cites those in prison and those being tortured as examples, but the point being made here is a clear one. Out of mutual love, familial love. Think of ourselves as being in those places where others are facing difficulties. He uses prison and torture as examples, but many examples of struggle and difficulty can be found all around us. Think of them and care for them as one of us, not as them. If we stay with this idea of familial love, as opposed to mutual love, then what are we to do with it? I said earlier the word family can have different meanings to different people. The idealised version of families as shown in Christmas adverts can be a world away from the reality for many people. And not just at Christmas time either. Family fallouts and feuds can become quickly entrenched and very hard to reconcile. Some families can be described as dysfunctional at best and many other words besides. That feeling of mutual love, familial love, is one that sadly many do not feel in their lives, where loneliness and isolation become the only company some but the good news is even in these realities, there is a light to be shown. We are all part of one worldwide Christian family, one that Jesus picked all of us for. A family that is bound by mutual, familial love for one another. A family where earthly divisions of us and them are cast aside. In this family, there is room for Israelites and Canaanites, all social classes, and everyone in between, where all are welcomed and fed, loved and cherished. 
where hospitality is plentiful and all share in the many gifts and talents within. But if one is suffering in any way, others are beside them, sharing in the adversity. The other side of that coin being, when good news is received by one, all rejoice in it. I'm not saying this family doesn't have disagreements. All families do from time to time. But when real push comes to real shove, we remember the teachings of Jesus to love one another. With this teaching too comes a task for us all, that we in turn show that love for others outside as well as within our family. Paul spoke about showing hospitality to the stranger. Christian charities such as Bethany Trust show hospitality to strangers, in their case, the homeless, through examples such as Safe Shelter at Night and the soup van that used to park on Waverly Bridge. But that hospitality is not something that needs to be outsourced. As I said earlier, something as simple as a smile or a hello to a stranger can be a small act of hospitality within its and if any of you catch one of your siblings doing or saying something that deserves a rebuke of some kind, no one is above such a rebuke. Even Jesus needed a rebuke from a Canaanite lady. And I would imagine he got a few from Mary when he was younger. But in this family, it is a place for everyone. At this table, there is a seat for all. A table and a family bounce together by mutual love for each other, following in Jesus' own teachings to love one another. To God be the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're able, please stand and let us say our, affirm our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Creator, Creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. And earth. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only God's Son, Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under the Pontius Pilate. Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is the table of our risen Lord. This is the table of the morning meal to strengthen body, soul, and mind. This is the table of the bread that shall last and the wine that shall never hurt. Come and receive God's gift and grace in bread and wine. All of you who love the Lord a little and want to learn to love him more. Let us now sing two hymns one after the other. I come with joy, a child of God, for a start, and then ye gates will uh, be brought whilst the offering will be brought forward. <laughs>
is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. So as the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, I take these elements of bread and of wine to, set, to be set apart for this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us now draw near to God and offer him our prayers and thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Living God, we praise you. You are majestic and holy, worthy of praise, a worker of wonders. In the beginning you created the universe, 
made sun and stars above our heads and the earth beneath our feet. Your word brought forth rock and stream, surging seas, wild winds and mild. You fashioned life in all its myriad forms and shaped from clay the wonder of the human frame. You spoke your word to those whom you had chosen, and in disobedience they turned from your command. But then you came yourself in Christ, the word made flesh, to serve and save. Yet he was shunned, despised by all, forsaken in the darkness of the cross. Yet you made the tree of death, the tree of life, and the empty grave a sign of glorious hope. You raised your son and brought him to your side again, where now he lives to pray on our behalf. Therefore, with all your people, and with the whole company of heaven, we praise you in the angels' hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now we celebrate the feast of our redemption and proclaim the death of Jesus, announce his resurrection and ascension until he comes in glory. Lord, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your most dear Son, and that we may become for you his living body, loving and caring for the world until the dawning of the perfect day. Most gracious God, accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and receive the offering of ourselves which we now make our thoughts and words, our desires and actions. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and cup, that with the faithful of all ages, we may be with one voice and one heart glorifying your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray, the prayer which he taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. So we do this in obedience to Christ's example and appointment. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread and he gave, gave thanks to God and broke it, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Eat the bread of heaven.
Taste and see how gracious and good our Lord is. Let us pray for others and for ourselves. Most loving God, we thank you for the nourishment you give us for body and soul. We thank you for the example and sacrifice of Christ our Lord, your Son. We thank you for leading and inspiring us with your holy healing spirit to seek your kingdom among us, even now. We come to you now with prayers for ourselves and others, all of us depending on your steadfast love, your willingness to hear our needs. Allow us to be open, like Jesus, to adapting to our circumstances. Remind us to check our assumptions and consider that the other person just might have a better understanding. Grant us the humility to recognize and respond with love when we're challenged, when we're unsure, even when we're afraid. 
Holy One, we pray for your church in this land and across the world. Allow church leaders to be open like Jesus, to adapt to new situations, to love your people. Help us to continually seek your will and to faithfully preach your word. Let the quiet, persistent voices speak up and be heard with love and welcome. Allow those who are hearing your call to receive affirmation from others growing the ministry in your church. Keep us tuned to your presence and grant your followers a deep longing for bringing your breadcrumbs to those who do not even know they hunger for them. Allow our compassion to be stirred especially for those in war-torn areas of the world, for people on the move who are looking for safety, and for people struggling with addictions. Lord, make your presence known to them. Let them see the light of your love in whatever way they need. And this day, we especially recall those in prisons, not far from here either. Not only the offenders, but also families who have been separated. The warders, chaplains, the friends, who must inter interact in new ways. Allow them to be open to new possibilities, to experience forgiveness, and to share your love. Lord, we pray for the healing and reconciliation of families and individuals with your help. Encircle with your care the world and all the people. Support and shield our new government and all leaders in communities and economy and all who seek the good of our land. Relieve each one in suffering on land or sea, each one in grief, wounded or weeping, and lead them with us to the house of your peace this day and forever. Keep us in fellowship with all who rest in you, and bring us at the last into the paradise of your presence, into the communion of your everlasting love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, blessed forever. Amen. Before we sing our last hymn, a few announcements. There's coffee after the service, um, and please, uh, there is uh, plenty to buy on the wee fair trade table, uh, the fair trade goods, of course, but also some harvesting has been done uh, there are gooseberries and rhubarb, so please consider making a crumble or two. Mm. <laughs> um, on Tuesday, we're, we're hopefully gardening, if the weather is uh, reasonable. On Wednesday morning, we'll be uh, having morning coffee again at half past ten, either in the garden, if the weather's good, or here behind me in the church, because, of course, the church hall is full of the Holiday Club at the moment. Um, Thursday night, please join me at half past seven, again here behind me, um, I think, and we are going to remember Eric Little on the day, the very day, of the 100th anniversary of him winning the gold medal in Paris. So uh, it's very, a very interesting night, well worth thinking about and remembering. So join me for at half past seven, here in church. This evening, next Thursday, this Thursday will be followed by uh, the next two or three Thursdays, I can't remember, but I'll announce it, um, to, to think about uh, some of Eric Little's work as a minister. Uh, we'll, we'll have a series of events thinking about discipleship based on Eric Little's work. I also have to announce that we now know that Tommy Norton's funeral 
will take place on Thursday the 18th of July at 1 o'clock in Dunfermline Cemetery, just a graveside funeral. Um, I, Kathleen, I've got the addresses now, which I must send you, because I don't imagine that many of you will be able to come through. But you remember Tommy, as long as he was able, he was a faithful attender here in church and served many of the other churches around us as a church officer. That's all the announcements, I think, today. Let's sing our last hymn, number 680, Your Call to Tell the Story. <laughs> Thank you. 